Hello, everyone. I hope you've had a great month so far. We're going to get started with today's lesson. Just wanted to make sure that I told you this before we get started. Next week, since there's only two days, Monday and Tuesday, I will be posting in Unit 2 some holiday how to's in a video, but there will not be an assignment due. OK, so you can be looking for some fun holiday things you can practice drawing over your break, but that will be the extent of it. You won't have anything to turn in. So today we're going to continue talking about the principles of art. We are we have a very cool artist. I bet you are curious about the artwork behind me today. So let's get started. I think you will have a lot of fun with this one, but I've said that before, but I think I've been right. OK. Here we go. And of course, we have to have a kitten update. I put up my tree. And the kittens are quite impressed with this new jungle gym that they now have. So Molly and Maggie have made a nice maze through the tree. I finally this morning put some ornaments on it. However, I don't know how long they're going to stay there, but they have really enjoyed seeing how high they can go. They're quite brave. I would like for them to maybe find something else to play in, but what can you do? They're kittens. They're just at that age where they're going to find things like that. Very fun. So we have been talking about the principles of design. Those are the rules an artist follows when they're using the elements of art. We've talked about pattern and contrast this month. Last week we talked about rhythm and movement. This week we're going to talk about unity and balance. And then when we come back, from your winter break, we're going to talk more about balance and emphasis. All of these fancy words you're learning this year. So this week we're learning about unity and balance. What could that mean? Let's look at unity. Unity is the feeling that everything in the artwork belongs together and is connected in some way. Unity means united like the united states of america you may have heard of that before i hope so you live there but when something's united it goes together or it's working together works can have unity in color shape form line like this artwork by kandinsky we talked about him earlier this year it's united in that there are several circular shapes and the colors are more of a muted tone. You could also say that it has unity in the use of line. Because those lines are all very similar to each other in the way they've been placed and in their weight, like how thick the lines are. And you know, if I would have he would have done like a zigzag line or some neon colors and thrown it thrown like a random one in. That really wouldn't have gone with the work very well. Here's another one. It's called Galatea of Spheres by Salvador Dali. This is actually a portrait of his wife that he drew. Now, what you notice about this one is that it's a portrait of someone, but it's all spheres or a circular 3D shape. So that's how it's united. It's united in the form that is used and also in the colors. It's a lot of light blues and some light yellows. So if you would have thrown in a, a cube or a, or a pyramid shape with all those spheres, it really would be out of place, but it's showing unity in that it came, it used the same shape over and over in the same colors as well. Now let's talk about balance. And balance is something we'll talk about several times because it is, there are several parts to it. Balance is when you distribute or when you place elements so that they are equal on both sides of the artwork. So if you were to divide an artwork in half, 
you would be able to feel that each side has the has an equal amount of things going on in it. You have an equal number of elements or it's not like one side of the paper has nothing and you drew everything over to the right. So here are the two types of balance that we're going to be talking about over the next two weeks. And then there's a third one that I'm going to save for when we do abstract and geometric art. So balance can be symmetrical, meaning that if there was a line that was coming through this page right here, the square, there would be an equal number of shapes on either side. Now it doesn't have to be perfectly exact. Okay, that symmetrical just means that they're similar when it comes to balance. If you have asymmetrical balance, that means that you may have uh, the, uh, the same number of shapes or the same number of elements in a in a on a page or in an artwork, but they there may be more of there may be like in this one there might be a larger shape in one side on on one section. And then there might be several smaller ones on the other section to balance it out. We will talk more about asymmetrical balance, which uh, asymmetrical means not symmetrical when we come back from our break. So right now we're just going to talk about symmetry or symmetrical balance. This is an artwork called Cut Out of Animals. And I want to show you how this has symmetry. So if I take this line and I place it in the center of this work, and I can also, you can also divide a page up or an artwork up going horizontally as well. So I'm going to place that one here. And I'll move it over just a little bit. Oops. All right, well, you'll get the idea. I'm going to leave it like that for the time being. OK, but then I bring this back up here. You're going to be able to see. That there are similar shapes, similar animals on each side of the artwork. Now they don't have to be exact. See how this butterfly is different than this butterfly. Even the lions are different colors, so they don't have to be identical, but it's similar in how they have been drawn. That's symmetrical balance. You can also tell there's a, a similar amount of objects drawn on each side. So there's an elephant here, there's an elephant here. There's a lion on this side, there's a lion to the left. That's symmetrical balance. Here is another example of symmetrical balance. We've also talked about George O'Keefe this year. And again, I'm going to Go back for just a second and put in my lines. Okay. All right, so if I were to divide this lovely painting of poppies in half, either way, you can see if I were dividing it in half vertically, there are two poppies on this page, one on each side, and then they're weighted or they are drawn the same size. So then even going horizontally, they're taking up the same amount of space. So balance does have to do a lot with that element of art space because it's how much room you're taking up with an object or an element on a page. Here is our artist of the week, and I think you'll really enjoy your project because this is a very cool, cool artist. He is from Atlanta, Georgia. His name is Greg Mike. He is a muralist, meaning that he creates murals, which are paintings that you would see on walls and buildings. He began doing art when he was 13. Now he was a graffiti artist. We'll talk more about graffiti when we do our uh, geometric abstract art unit. But uh, he has been making art for a long time. In fact, his work is so popular, different companies, different brands like Nike work with him to collaborate so they can put his designs on their products. So here is what he is best known for. Actually, I want to show you first. This is the state of Georgia in the southeast. Here's Atlanta, the city where he's from. 
this is one of his many murals that we're going to be looking at in just a moment. But his murals often have, or almost always have, the character Loudmouth in them. And that's spelled correctly. It ends with F. And that's if you are spelling mouth, it'd be T-H. But his characters, it ends with F. Okay, so a Loudmouth character is his icon or his, what he's best known for. And even with this character, you can see symmetrical balance. You can see how he's, this character is similar on both sides. Even if he's holding one thing in one hand, it just has to be similar. Here is one of his full murals. So let's talk a little bit about unity. Now, in this artwork, he's using cool colors. He's using lots of greens, blues, purples, a little pink. You know, he, that's the colors that he chose to show, and that shows unity in his project or in his artwork. Also, do you see the eyes of all the characters? They are very round. They have the same shape. Uh, they have, he has different colors for the pupils or the irises rather, but they have the same look to them. That's also how he's showing unity. Also in the, the tongues of the characters too, they are all similar. If he drew one of them with different like anime eyes and the rest of them had the googly eyes to them, that wouldn't show unity. That they'd be, one thing would be out of place. This is a house that he designed that has his character Loudmouth on it. I thought you would like to see that, but it's called the Loud House in Atlanta, where he has painted the outside and the inside too a little bit with his designs. And just a few more to look at uh, to show you unity. You can show unity with lines. You can see here how he's in the top one, how he's got lines that are going about the same thickness in different directions, but they're the same type of line. Shape, the circles, and with the eyes, and with the form, also he's showing unity. They're cubes, these characters. And as far as symmetrical balance goes, he does fill up the page. He has a lot of asymmetrical balance too, but his characters have a lot of symmetrical balance. They are very identical on each side. And that will help us because we are going to draw our own loudmouths in just a moment. So I will be posting like I've been doing each um, time this month. I will be posting a tutorial on how to draw on sketches if you'd like to draw on your iPad. But if you would like to stay with me, we are going to draw loudmouth on pencil and paper. I am going to use a uh, crayon and marker for this. You can choose to use both two or just use one or the other. OK, so I think you will really enjoy this. Let's get started. All right, you should see my screen. All right. We're going to get started by drawing our loudmouth character. OK, so here is my paper. Let me move my paper over here a little bit. Now, we're going to try to show symmetrical balance not only in our characters, but how we fill our page. So what I'm going to do with my paper, just to kind of help myself out, I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to lightly fold it in half. And I'm only going to fold it in half in one direction because I want my paper to lay flat. And But you could also fold it the other way too. This is enough though, because I want to try to, to make sure I have an equal amount of objects or elements on each side. We're showing symmetrical balance. So we're going to create our loudmouth character. That's fun to say loudmouth. Uh, but before we get started, think about how you also want to show unity. What colors will you use? And what shapes will you use? And how you want to draw your loudmouth? There's several ways you could draw them. He has many different variations. I will share with you how I'm drawing mine. You can draw yours exactly like mine, or you can change it up a bit. Totally up to you. But I am going to start by drawing a diagonal line. 
And then I'm going to take that diagonal line. I'm going to draw down. Draw down. It kind of looks like a diamond shape. And I'm going to connect it. So here's the start of my loud mouth. If you want, I would go ahead and maybe erase or not even draw a completely connected line here at the bottom because we're going to be giving our loud mouth a tongue. All of his characters have seem to have nice long tongues, so we're ours will too. And then I noticed that he drew some of his look like forms, like 3D cubes. So that's what mine's going to be like too, at least on this side. Okay, so I'm going to connect it and make a cube. I'm going to draw a diagonal line up here. Connect it across. All right, and so now I want to put in his eyes, my loud mouth's eyes. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to draw a circle and then another circle. Actually, what you could do, you could have left those lines down, give your character eyelids if you wanted to. I already started erasing, but if you wanted to, you could use that line that was going through your eyes as an eyelid. That'd be different in a good way. Different is good. Then we're going to give them the iris, the part that's colored in the eye, and then we're going to give them the pupil. You can go ahead and color that in. Now, if you'd like, you can give your character a nose. You don't have to, though. Then I'm going to give them a mouth. So I'm going to come right across, and I'm going to make a rectangular shape but I'm not going to close it off in the bottom. And notice a lot of his characters have square mouths, so mine's going to have a square mouth. And then I'm going to give him some teeth. And his teeth on his character, sometimes he has a unique tooth. Maybe you have a unique tooth as well. I'm going to give my loud mouth some teeth. And then I'm going to draw the tongue. If you have to erase a little bit more, it's okay. Then I'm going to wee, wee, and connect. Woo, my loud mouth has a very long tongue coming out of his mouth, just like the ones. And if you wanted to put some teeth down here at the bottom, you sure could. Nothing wrong with that. So here is my first loud mouth character. And if you wanted to give your loud mouth character arms, you could do that. Maybe you wanted to come up here. And his arms, don't worry about if you can't draw hands perfectly. You know, you can give them like cartoon hands, like maybe you're just going to give them four fingers like that. And maybe the other one will come down here. And we can do the same thing. You don't have to give them arms unless you want to. I think he turned out kind of cool. I bet yours is cool too. So there's my first loud mouth. Let's talk about how he's got balance. So that's his, his symmetry here. If I even lay my pencil down through the middle of him, even though his arms are going, different, going in different directions, his eyes are about the same. His mouth is about the same. He's a cube shape, a rectangular prism shape more so than a cube. So he has symmetrical balance. Let's go over here. We can draw our other character. We want to have an equal number, a symmetrical amount of balance on our page as well. So we're going to try to mirror the shape and it does not have to be perfect. In fact, if you wanted to do a round um, loud mouth, you can do that too. It doesn't matter. You pick. But I'm going to try to draw another cube shaped loud mouth. And I'm just doing the same thing I did before. Oops, I went down a little too far. Da, 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 fix that. Right, and if it's not perfect, that's okay. Then I'm going to come up here, and maybe I'll give this one the eyelids like I was talking about. You can leave that line going through there. And I'm going to give this one three eyes, because I noticed that one of his loudmouths has three eyes. You could give him one eye if you wanted to. But I'm going to use that line since it's there. That's going to be like my eyelid. And I'm going to give them the iris. And then the pupil. And maybe I'm going to give this one some eyelashes. 
So your loud mouth doesn't have to look exactly like Greg Mike's. I'm going to give them a nose. You don't have to give them a nose if you want, don't want to. And I'm going to go ahead and erase some of this because it's going to overlap. I'm going to give them a mouth. Whoops, forgot that I want to make sure. Got room there for the tongue. And I'm going to give them a row of teeth. And I'm drawing two curved lines like a tongue, like a, a heart across the top. Might even draw this one a little bit differently. And whoa, there's my loud mouth tongue. And maybe they're going to give each other a high five. Yours do not have to give each other high fives. But mine's going to give each other a high five. I'm going to try to for symmetrical balance. Draw an arm similar to the one. I just drew. OK, so we've got our loud mouth characters. Let me move my page up a tiny bit. They kind of remind me of SpongeBob. <laughs> he actually, what he, Greg Mike does, he often will take his, um, he uses different cartoon characters and he will put them in his artwork in some way. He has to change it up a little bit so he's not doing something that's called violating copyright, but he does use different characters that other people have created in his work sometimes. Alrighty, so now what we need to do is we need to outline this if you want. If you don't want to, it's okay. But since these are very cartoony, you may want to take a pen, if you have a black ink pen, or a black marker and outline it. Your loudmouths. This will just kind of make them stand out a little bit more. It's not perfectly essential. You can still create some very cool critters or characters here without doing that. And you don't have to outline every part of your loudmouth. Actually, I forgot to do this hand up here. Like you may want to save certain parts of your loudmouth to not outline. But he, um, when Greg Mike creates his characters, he doesn't use value. So he's not, we're not really worried about light and dark here, but we are going to use color. Remember, you should be thinking about what colors you want to use. It's like that one I showed you where he just used cool colors. He just used like blues and greens and purples. Actually, those are all my favorite colors. <laughs> uh, you can do that as well. Pick what colors, the color scheme that you want to use. Since I have this in my hand, I'm going to go ahead and color in the, the uh, pupils nice and dark. I might go ahead and outline the nose. This is very different than my normal st style of drawing, but that's okay. You learn something new when you try something new. Okay, so I'm going to stop there with my outlining. And then I'm just going to go back and I'm going to start with my colors. And I am going to, because I really like the, the uh, purples and blues and greens of that one that he drew, I am going to do that for this one. I'm going to, you don't have to do what I'm doing. If you don't like purples and blues and greens, by all means, do what you like. Do what you think will look cool. So this one is going to be purple. So I'm going to start here, coloring in. My character and if you wanted to show value you could you could just since this is a we don't mean ours three-dimensional i made mine three-dimensional you may choose not to i might color this one a different color so since we have these the uh balance with how we got our characters on the page you can use different colors as long as they're united or you, they show unity in some way like they're 
all cool colors or maybe you're going to use all complementary colors that would be cool <laughs> no pun intended there and i should do i should take my black marker and i should color her eyelashes so they stand out I'll get her eyelids while I'm at it. Okay. So if I wanted to show value here, I could take a lighter purple, maybe do the front where her face is going to be. I decided this one's going to be the girl. You don't have to have one of them be a girl or a boy. It's totally up to you. You could also, your un you, you could show unity by choosing all holiday colors. If you wanted to use all red and green, or you want to use all different shades of blue, that would be nice. Okay. And I actually think I'm going to take my black because I like the way this looks. I like how it pops. I'm going to outline. the eyes as well all right so i've got my character in purple i'm going to go with a green for her eyes then for her eyelids i might go with a pink to match her tongue and if you wanted to give your loud mouth hair go right ahead I even give her a pink nose too and I might show it might press a little bit harder on one side to show some value because even though he doesn't necessarily use a lot of value in his work I like to show value and then I'm gonna go on and just color in the tongue and then I'm going to show you see I'm just applying I'm applying more pressure with my pink down the side of her tongue and then as I color in I'm going to apply less pressure and then I might go in a little bit more and apply some pressure right here where her tongue kind of curves down. And then I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to be lighter with my pressure. So I go and finish coloring the, whole, the entire tongue. So just with one color, because I know I love using lots of different colors because I'm a color person. But you can, if you just have one shade of pink, you could easily show value like that. See? Like it stands out. You don't have to have three or four different colors in there. Alrighty. So we've got our Miss Loudmouth colored in. While I have this lovely pink shade in my hand, I might just go ahead and color in his nose. And I can do his tongue the same way. And if you want to give yours a different colored tongue, you could do that. That would be cool. Sometimes he draws eyes on his tongues too. So if you want to try that, that would be cool and unique. You could also give them winter hats if you wanted to. You wanted to draw a hat on your character. I'm, I'm gonna keep mine the way they are though. Alrighty, now let's try. Hmm, what color do I wanna make you? I think I'm going to make you, hmm blue blue make you blue you're going to be blue and be my favorite shade of blue how's that okay all right let's go so i'm going to color this loud mouth blue so my unity is going to be cool colors and we're also going to show unity in our shapes that we choose oh you know what i wanted to color around his eyes like i did with miss loud mouth loud mouth and this looks like he's wearing glasses you could draw glasses on your loud mouth
right. Oh, did I pick up a different color blue? I sure did. All righty. Well, you know what? That's OK. I might quickly go back over this. You, if you did that, that would be OK. You know what? I might even use three different shades of blue for this loud mouth just because. You know what? You got this one you can use this vlog. We'll keep going. Alrighty, and then I think he's going to have green eyes too, maybe a different shade of green. And something that Greg Mike does with his murals is that he often uses bubbles, like talking bubbles for his characters, and they're always saying positive things. Like, love, his, his motto is live life loud. So sometimes his characters say that or they'll say think positive. I think you saw that on one of them too. So that would be something nice that you could put on yours as well. Let me give him a green set of eyes. This is a green. Alrighty. And then you could take your marker if you're using the marker and go in here and do the mouth. And I'll do the mouth over here. So I'm thinking about as I'm doing this, what could I have my character say? That could be positive. I'll have mine say positive messages too. Sometimes instead of writing a positive message, he just draws a symbol like a heart. So I could do that. OK, so I'm going to maybe freehand this part. Mine's going to say I'm going to draw a bubble, so I'm drawing a curved line. Then a circle that's almost closed and I come back over and I hit the tail end of it and he's going to say. Be kind. And then Miss Loudmouth over here, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to draw a curved line followed by a little loop, the loop circle. Now I close it up and then draw the tail end going down to her mouth. And she's going to say, Stay positive. OK. So we've got our characters and if you wanted to color, I'm going to leave their hands alone, but if you wanted to color their hands a little bit to show some, uh, just to make them stand out, you certainly could. It's totally up to you. But now we're going to work on what else we could add to our background to show unity. And I am going to grab a marker here. So what you could do before you get started with this, you could divide your paper. You could just create like a section. I'm just going to take a marker. I'm going to freehand this. The life on the edge here and. I'm going to guesstimate that it would go through here. And then I might divide it up like this. This does not have to be exactly like mine. OK. And then once I have that done, so I use the green. Now I think I'll use a purple. You could just have a section. That just has. Circle, so we're going to show unity by the colors and the shapes we choose. So that section might have. polka dots as well as this section. Alrighty. And I might go back and add more. And then this section might have some zigzag lines.
and I might go up here and do the same thing. And come down here and then I might throw in one more. Hmm. Gonna go back and choose. I got a green right here. I think I will choose a hmm. And just draw some wavy lines. They might wave in different directions. All right, so there is what I have so far. Then what you could do to show some unity. You could color in the sections. You don't have to color in every section unless you want to. You know, do you know what you could have them saying if you wanted to, if you're thinking ahead to New Year's resolutions, you could have them saying the resolutions you're going to try to keep in the new year, things that you want to work on, some goals that you have for yourself. And I could have made this line wave all the way across. So I'm just Maybe you just don't see where it touches. OK, and then I'm going to take a blue. And I come over here. And color in a couple of things. So I'm keeping the same unity by how I'm like skipping lines, alternating. I think I'll just pick one more section to do like this. I really like these, these colors match my office. I might have to hang this up. <laughs> I'm going to grab that purple again. I'm going to do this one other section and then voila, you will have your loudmouth to share with me and with each other. So as I'm finishing this up, we are we talked about unity. Unity is how you show things belong together by with color, shape, form, and line. So that things look like they belong. And then we talk about balance, weighting, or having the same or equal amounts of things on each side of your paper so that it's balanced and you're not just drawn looking at one side and have nothing on the other and this is symmetrical balance because our figures and the objects on our page are similar on each side so this turned out cool and i can't wait to see yours whoops i did not color one of you let me get that very quickly so i'm looking forward to seeing these these are fun these are cool. I love them. Cute, cute, cute. Anyway, have a super week, my friends. I will post those holiday how to for you for next week. Have a wonderful break if I don't see you before then. And I will see you in 2021, which I hope is going to be a fantastic year. So stay well, make good choices, and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.